Oh my, <laughs> we was told there'd be no crying, right? <laughs> Our next survivor, Megan Holmes, is a grateful heart patient. Having lived with a congenital aortic valve defect, unicuspid, which was replaced with a mechanical valve at the age of 42. She grew up in Canada, has lived in a mining and farming towns, a police station, Princeton, and the University of Cambridge, but calls Minnesota home. She holds an MSc in microbiology and immunology, is an at-home parent and community volunteer, and is a person that stutters. She takes what her care team at the Minneapolis Heart Institute has accomplished throughout her heart journey as a true human gift and tries to honor this by working towards the best health she can personally achieve. She hopes to share her experience living with aortic disease and her experience leading up to her open heart surgery and recovery process. Megan lives in Chanhassen with her husband, Russ, and two daughters. Let's hear it for Megan Holmes. Thanks, everybody. In my conversations with some of you today, I've seen how we each come here with different experiences. I hope you all find some useful parallels in my story. I was born with a unicuspid aortic valve, which is where the three cusps of the valve are partially fused. I heard the words heart murmur. There we go. I'm short, I know. I heard the words heart murmur a lot during my childhood. It's, <clears throat> this was not serious at that early stage, but I do remember having to drive the eight hours to see the cardiologist in the city every so often. The first time I heard I would have to have heart surgery was about 1986, after having me run on the treadmill, the cardiologist said, as you get older, your valve will get narrower, you'll have to have heart surgery to fix it. Well, my eyes must have gone wide as he added, well, don't worry, that won't be till you're 60 or 70. So I really have been waiting for my heart surgery most of my life. And like anything that isn't pressing, my heart defect went into the background. My early years and into my 20s, I only noticed that I could not do as much as others. But since I only knew my own heart, this was my normal. It was only once I had my children that I found that my symptoms that I found symptoms to become more pronounced, my heart always present in my face. And by 2019, simple walks would cause me to be close to fainting and almost purple in the face. My defect had finally caught up to me. In early 2020, I was told I would have to have surgery within the year. With recommendation from family, we found an excellent surgeon and cardiologist at the Minneapolis Heart Institute and all I could do was wait. If there was a year to think, it was 2020. As the, the date came closer, yes, there were moments of grief and fear. But I kept coming back to a number, the probability of success for my surgery, so close to 100%. I thought to the time before me, how this number has not always been this high. What I felt in these thoughts were gratitude, I thought to all the learning from good and bad outcomes that surgeons, engineers, doctors, nurses had to attain. Humility. I thought to the patients that came before me and that I, I was no different than they were. And in these thoughts, I felt calm. And in this, I came to trust. It is the ability to entrust others with your life that really helped me face what was to come. I, I wish this for each of you on that path. So my surgery was on October 14th of that year. It went smoothly. My unicuspid valve replaced with a mechanical one. I spent about a week in the hospital, slowly coming back to myself. I did have to have a pacemaker placed due to a left bundle branch block, all those bees. <laughs> this was a known risk, and although it wasn't what I hoped for, I have found since that the P 
pacemaker does give a sense of security, particularly in those early days after surgery, and continues to be helpful in monitoring my heart as issues come up. It is a part of me now and a useful partner. I would like to mention how important the interaction with nurses were in that time before surgery, during, and after. They were the first and the last people I interacted with, and it was always their small acts of kindness and follow-through that made me feel that within a system, there was additional hope and positivity towards my outcome, and this helped me approach healing with a positive outlook. Additionally, when sudden concerns came up once home, it was very helpful to be able to phone the cardiac nurse line, even at night, and receive an answer from them or an on-call cardiologist. I was unsteady and nerves and on my feet in those early days. Once I was home, life was very limited to protecting my chest and resting. I was surprised that I did not experience overwhelming pain, discomfort, yes, but manageable day to day. If there is a time in your life to ask others for help, then after heart surgery is that time. Whether it be driving you to appointments, bringing food and doing chores, please think to accept these as they are offered. And if you are like me, where you find value in tasks and movement, work towards accepting that the time after surgery is to slow down and heal. But there is only so much rest one can take. And to counter this, I took on cardiac rehab as a challenge. I, I went to St. Francis and Shakopee and had a watchful and supportive group to push me through circuits, allowing me to gain stability and confidence in my body. I felt this confidence, too, from the constant monitoring of my heart while exercising and that weekly check-in with someone face-to-face, -face, particularly during COVID. This was very helpful for a positive mindset. I would like to share with you an observation during cardiac rehab that has shaped how I view this entire experience. I made it my goal to learn how to run <laughs> and to complete the Medtronic Twin Cities 5K that following October, which I did. Each week I would progress. Yes. Each week I, I, I would progress running further and longer. In one session, I was on the treadmill, wires stuck to my chest. When the fellow came up to the treadmill and turned it off saying, Megan, please stop. Your heart rate is way too fast. What I'd only noticed up to this point was the healing the rest of, of my body was doing and not my heart. I realized in that moment, for the first time in my life, I could not feel my heart beating. Or rather, it was like it had been put in a small box and, and kind of tucked away somewhere else in my chest. The words I thought were, so this is what that was supposed to do. But in abstract, my mind went to the human effort to make the valve as it is, the surgical technique as it exists, the training and practice of my surgical team, and that all that was manifest in my body as something that works. I can say I've never felt more a part of humanity as in, as in that moment. Sorry. And now on to the rest of my life. <laughs> how have patterns changed and how have I adjusted? I continue to see my excellent cardiologist keeping an eye on the heart shortly after surgery and monitoring it as other issues have appeared separate from my valve. I really appreciate how in our appointments the expertise I have with myself is balanced by his expertise of cardiology and given weight and decision making for my care. Because I have a mechanical valve, I'm taking a blood thinner, which keeps the blood from clotting as it passes through the valve. This has meant being mindful of the types of food and drink I have and having my blood tests every three weeks or so to ensure my reading is in a good range. 
I appreciated the calls, too, from the nurse with the results, because, and because they're serious about it, I am, too. I try to move every day, a little or more than a little. In that first year, it felt like energy was coming out of my fingertips, and I enjoyed pushing myself further physically. But I've learned that although I have this defect fixed, my heart is not a normal heart. I've scaled back what I do, and because I have to, it is something I'm at peace with. After my surgery, I consciously try to eat better, eat less, not because I have to, but because I want to. And overall, I've tried to do more for myself than just my surgery. I would, I would like to thank Dr. Robert Steffen, my surgeon, Dr. Kevin Harris, my cardiologist, and Dr. Jean Porter, my GP, and their care teams for taking me on this journey safely. Thank you.